Hello, world. This is T.J. Marsh from the Radio. 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 Okay. Hi, everyone. We'll try this again. This is T.J. Marsh, E.T. Radio, with American Communications Online here in the United States of America. So welcome aboard, all you ground troops, spinning around smartly on the planet, the blue marble, traveling through our solar system at a zero level, as I guess Michio Kaku might say. And uh, we're going to be talking about some great things here. Level one is when you can get out there and travel in the galaxy. And from level, level two, from what I understand, is going from one galaxy to another. And level three, universe to universe, I guess, or maybe it's dimension to dimension because we've got one, two, three, four, and five. But uh, tonight I've asked Tommy Hawksblood Sinisi. He was born Thomas Anthony Sinisi in New Jersey. And... Uh, He's been with me since 2012. We actually met here as friends on the radio uh, to do Stargate to the Cosmos. And uh, we have some uh, differences of opinion over who came up with the name because Robert O'Dean, Bob Dean, uh, one of the great famous ufologists, researchers, prior military, a veteran, uh, actually put up the $500 with Janet Carroll Lesson which she did return that back, and I made sure that uh, she showed the receipt and all that because we decided not to do that at the time because he got rather ill, and I believe he's passed now. But uh, Tommy and Janet met in Hawaii and brought us together for the Stargate to the Cosmos, which we were going to have back in 2012 and uh, October, but Janet finally had one 2018, and Tommy and I were not able to attend, but we may be putting something together in the future. If not 2019, it will be 2020, so we're still going to try to do our ACO club and meet everybody and uh, share things. My daughter's passed, so many of you know that already, so I thought it would be a good thing to ask him to bring them Gaul, who is a Buddhist, with him. Because I'm hoping we get this book done after my daughter died this year. If we don't get a event where we can meet, at least we can do a e-book and publish a book uh, in her honor. And uh, this is going to be mainly about Tommy because I want to know a lot more about him. Uh, he has a birth certificate like I do, and you may want to go on YouTube and look up T.J. Morris. Uh, and I'm talking to Allied Command Organization, but Tommy here has uh, a name, Hawksblood. A lot of people know him as Tommy Hawksblood, and he's, he wrote several books, How to See God, and he's working on one for How to See UFOs uh, for a manual for our group in Hawaii. And he was very interested in UFOs growing up, and uh, he was uh, a speaker at the Prophet con- conferences and uh, – He got to know Janet, and I'll let him tell you about how we all got started here because we're coming on our seventh year in June, and Namgal's always been there. And I never got to talk to her except here a couple of times on the radio for a short period of time. So she does have a history here, but we never got into full detail. So finally, seven years almost to June 2019. (laughs) So 2012 from 2019 will definitely be seven years. But uh, this is exciting for me because Tommy and I were due writing a book, and uh, like, we're both universal life ministers and metaphysicians, and Namgal Lord, but she goes by Namgal Lamo, and it's N-A-M-G-Y-A-L from what I'm told, and Lamo, L-H-A-M-O, and it's quite different than I'm even accustomed to looking at. And uh, I wanted to say Nam Gaul with an H, but Tommy says it's a Y. So uh, we're going to let Tommy introduce himself to everybody that's not familiar with him. Many of you know uh, from the beginning with T.J. Morris ET Radio and T.J. Morris Media News Publishing Agency and our ACO Social Club. And my company in Gulf Breeze, Florida is now called American Communications Online. So without further ado, I'm going to plug Tommy in, and then he will – after that, plug Namgal in, but let's let him introduce himself and then she. All right. Woo. <laughs> You're on, but there's well, a big greetings. thrill there. Hi. Great. Can you hear me okay? 
Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, that was just a quick shrill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Introduce my yourself. My name is Tommy Horsewood. I'm on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, I came out here about 20 years ago, and I met my partner, and we've been together the whole time. Uh, it's a, it's a spiritual quest, spiritual journey. Uh, she's a Buddhist, and I'm an, I, well, I call myself a realist. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky in, in a lot of ways, and I have a lot of problems in a lot of ways. I, my, my thing started when I was six. I was on search of truth, always, and dealing with many different things along the way. I'm not going to get into all that. Anybody wants to know all that, i got two books out. I'll send either one of them if they want it. Just send an email to my email address, uh, How to See God and When Truth is Called Crazy. Once my autobiography explains everything I went to to get to where I'm at now, I mean, it's it's been up and down, good, bad, and worse. So uh, I don't want to go into that now. Uh, if you want to hear all that, uh, I did a show on it two weeks ago, uh, two, two sh- shows ago. You can pull it up. I get into the real hardcore part of it. Uh, but I want to get into more like where we want to go today is about soul, spirit, consciousness, how people relate to that, and and how uh, we're going to live life from that awareness that we attain from that, uh, and what we create in the life that we create now, how it affects our future life, which Namga will get into because she's her teachings are all about that, uh, and I'll let her go into detail when she starts talking about that. Uh, for me personally. I've been on my own quest. I studied 14 religions, studied in the physical world, the dimensional worlds, uh, masters, teachers, shamans, medicine people, deities. Uh, I don't say I work with angels because angels aren't really teachers. They actually bring you places and show you things and tell you things that are going to happen. So my, my, my view of everything is based on what I actually experienced so it's my personal awareness that I attained in this lifetime, and I did become aware of all my lifetimes back to Atlantis and even past Atlantis. Uh, so I'm, I'm a rebel because I stand by what I experienced because I know it's true for me, and I know it's true for what I went through. So people have to learn how to get their own experiences, and Buddhism is one incredible way to get into that. Uh, I was in a path called Ekankar. It's, it's, it's an important way to go. But the, the, the foundation of the physical world always tries to make somebody important in it, and then it's like you have to be under them. Spiritual quest is an individual path back to its true source. That's the way I'll describe it. So uh, what I want to do is I'm going to introduce Namgao uh, because she has a lot to talk about in what she experienced, what she went through in her life to, to get her to where she is. But she's, she's an aware person aware of the teachings in a great way. So nobody else that I know could explain it better. Uh, so that's why I just, well, TJ wanted me to bring somebody on, and I think she's the right person to talk about it because uh, I've been involved with deities and, and all those words. But uh, for me to try to go into that, I can only go into my direct experiences, not what Buddhism does and how other people relate to that, how it's spread around the world and those kind of things. I'm into an individual path back to God. That's my life. I'm not saying it's everybody. Everybody likes to be involved with the world, saving the planet, saving people. But I use this word, earth is hell. It doesn't get worse than here. Uh, It only gets better if you get away from here. So when when they created the word hell, it was men because they were egotistical and they were stuck and they didn't want to be in the same place. So they created a hell somewhere else. Uh, But this is the only place you as a person soul or consciousness can experience pain, suffering, see it constantly, be dealing with it at, at, a, at a one-to-one level, and, it, and it's affecting you at every, every aspect of the way. So when you go, let go of the physical body, obviously the physical body is one thing, and your next body, soul, spirit, consciousness, different people look at it different ways, cannot experience pain the same way the physical body does, and it doesn't. And it, I can only say as you move closer to what you are searching for, it only gets better. So uh, I'll, I'm going to bring her on. And I, TJ, if you have questions and you really want to get into it, just ask them because I, I, I know you got a few questions that you're going to ask. But uh, uh, yeah, who knows? It I want to start than, with her name. Her. Yeah, I, right. I've got a few. I'll here. let her talk for that. All right, I'll let her okay. say her name and, and tell you. Thank you. Oh, 
hold it. No, hold it. Oh, I have to hold it. Hey, aloha. Hi, TJ. Hi, Nangal. Please tell me how to spell your name and how you got that name. And then uh, I know you're in Hawaii, but you can just sort of introduce yourself like Tommy does. You've heard us for seven years now. So go ahead and introduce mm-hmm. yourself, and then we'll go into all the studies. And you can help me with my daughter passing, hopefully make me feel better. But go ahead, Nangal. Tell oh. us how to spell your name and <laughs> how you got that. Certainly, yes. Um, my Lama... Um, in Maui, gave me this name, Namgyal, N-A-M-G-Y-A-L, which means victorious one um, generally, but it, 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 it has a lot of other deep meanings, as many things in Buddhism do, but just generally. It means victorious one, and Lamo uh, actually denotes that it is a female. So okay, great. It, and that so that was my refuge name. When you uh, take refuge in in um, to Tibetan Buddhism, I, I'm not. I think so. Probably with all Buddhist faiths, yeah. They they clip a piece of your hair and they um, give you a refuge name. At which time you promise that um, uh, you will um, that it's it's essentially your bodhisattva vows that that you will will um they'll come back uh be for the uh, sake of all sentient beings and that becomes your focus nice Other. well i talked to buddhist once in uh, washington dc at the buddhist and he explained to me we all had a name and I didn't get that far, but I just told him I, I was very curious and interested in all that. So I'm so glad to have you come on and sort of enlighten us, if you don't mind, for all those that aren't Buddhist. I think Tommy and I were born sure. main mainland and Christians, but, you know, that even changes because we're both universal life now. We study all world religions, and I love the people that I've met that are Buddhist. They've always been so kind to me, and uh, so, you know, this is a place we share, and I I want to believe that we're all reincarnates, and I have past lives like Tommy does. But uh, you want to talk talk to us about how you – were you born in America, and did you – how did you become a Buddhist? I know you're in in Hawaii, right, the big island. Right. But how did you you swap over, uh, and then we'll get into how you met, you know, the the, the uh, Lama. You know, I was born. Uh, I was born in the Midwest, and then um, I always was very, you know, extremely spiritual. However, um, there wasn't, as you know, from being from that part of the world, uh, there's not much offered. You know, um, a little Catholicism and maybe the Bible Baptist Church in the back. But nevertheless, there was always a, a deep-seated spiritual feeling. Um, ever since I can remember, even as a small child. So, um, I, but I, I didn't have a way of channeling it. I felt out of place. But you know, nevertheless, um, yeah, all I had available to be bold to me was you know Christianity, and so I hung with uh, with with Bible Baptist Church for. Oh gosh, maybe ten or fifteen years, and then I studied Catholicism for a while, and then, um, you know, as as we got older, and um, uh, I think uh, you know some of the seventies and eighties started blossoming a bit more. Rajneesh was moving here, and um, uh, Richard Albert uh, had published Be Here Now, I think, by that time. And some of the Eastern modalities were starting to raise their heads over here. And so I took notice and, and I, you know, I felt, uh, uh, you know, always uh, very drawn to those um, modalities of practice. And so, yeah. Yeah. And then um, when I, came to Hawaii, um, uh, Tibetan Buddhism found me. In, ah, uh, okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of a magical story, but um, it, it's, it's, it's a little far-fetched 
at the same time.